finished work early today, so I'm going to do a little review of the CV500F for you. We're lucky enough to be a Honda School of Motorcycling which means that Honda provide us with the training bikes for our students to use so we get brand new bikes for the students to learn on which is always a positive and the students get a good incentive to buy them having trained with us so it's a winner for everybody this is the CB500F which is our A2 restricted bike so if you pass on this bike you get the restricted license which is applicable for the 19 to 24 year old it's a really lovely bike to ride and the alternatives that we also have at the training school to learn on are the Yamaha mt 7s which can be restricted and de-restricted as we so wish whereas with this bike it's simply restricted in its manufacture and they're probably the two bikes that are most comparable and they are quite different they're both the twin engine but they feel different when you're riding each has their pluses and minuses but i like to ride both of them so i'm just going to drop into virtue honda What better place to start this review than at Honda on Lenton Lane in Nottingham? We are the approved school of motorcycling for Honda in Nottingham. This means they provide us with brand new motorcycles for our students to learn on. So we have this beautiful example of the CB500F, which is the A2 restricted bike. And we also have three of their CB650Rs, which I've ridden on a number of my other demonstration rides. Today I'm going to do a little review of this bike. It's not necessarily going to contain all the technical specifications because you can easily Google those and find out what they are very accurately, whereas I might misremember some of them. So let's have a little look at it. As you can see, this is the 2021 model. It is a little bit of an upgrade on the earlier models in that it now has two twin brake discs at the front. The earlier model, which we had the um, year before, only had one brake disc at the front. And the brakes are significantly better now. It also has your upside down forks, which again was an upgrade. I believe the earlier model had the standard forks. So the front suspension is a little bit nicer too. Otherwise it remains much the same. It's a lovely bike to ride. So much so that two of our instructors have already bought CV500s in one guise or another purely because they really enjoyed riding these ones that we've had from Honda during the training school process. A really good looking bike, nice sharp features at the front but not so sharp that it looks sort of space age. Obviously the crash bars are training school crash bars but they are very good, they're from Hepco and Becker. Um, the engine bars I would keep on if it was my own personal bike probably the handlebar and the rear crash bars we'd be taking off because they do look a little bit like a an extra frame that <laughs> we hopefully won't be needing as full license holders really good looking bike led lights all round got your standard honda indicators which seem to be on most of their bikes now that are very very good they've got the running lights at the front which are orange whilst you're riding along so let's get going one of the first things that i notice on these bikes is how good the mirrors are these mirrors are wonderful for seeing what's behind you whereas by comparison i'm not as keen on the ones on the mt07 admittedly i haven't got any footage of the mt07 to share with you at the moment perhaps we'll do a review on the mt07 shortly but these mirrors are lovely big wide mirrors they give you a really good view of what's going on behind without too much having to tuck your elbows in it's quite often on the MJ7s you have to tuck your elbows in to be able to see in the mirrors. Nice clear dash as you can see. 
very easy to work out what you're looking at. The only difficulty I've found with this dash is that when you've got bright sunshine facing you, so bright sunshine in your eyes, it's quite difficult for your eyes to adjust to see the dash. There's something to do with how long it takes your pupils to react when you look down to what is effectively quite a dark dash um, or display. And it's a little bit tricky to look down, take your speed and look back up again. It's only a minor point because otherwise it's a very very clear and easy to read dash and I really do like it very much. It's very modern and it does the job perfectly. First gear feels relatively short on this bike unless you're really using it in a straight line to get your speed up. So quite often we'll get into second gear nice and early. And then once you're in second it's got a surprising amount of power if you need to use it. It really is an enjoyable bike to ride with plenty of power. I can see why the two instructors who've bought them have bought them because for the sort of riding that we do, we don't need much more power than this. We don't go chasing around town or chasing people in the countryside. It's not really what we get up to. One thing to note about all the Honda bikes that we have on our fleet of training school bikes is how light the clutches are. On this 500 especially, it's such a light clutch, it's lovely. It makes your gear changes and your slow speed riding a doddle, no more handache, which again by comparison to the MT-07, there's quite a lot of resistance on the clutch with the MT-07 and prolonged periods of slow riding can become a little bit achy. So if you have any hand issues at all, it might be worth trying a Honda, they're ever so light and very enjoyable with no pain issues. The brakes are nice and responsive. They're not sharp, they've got a good amount of feel and the rear brake likewise, a nice disc brake. It's very effective and it does the job very nicely, it allows you to do nice smooth stops at the end of your stops. One thing I really like about the Honda motorcycles is how smooth the gearboxes feel. I'm really impressed with how they feel when you're changing gear might sound like an odd thing to say but if you've ever ridden a Yamaha and you've felt their clunky gearboxes the Honda ones are smooth like you're running a knife through butter the Yamaha gearboxes certainly do their job but these ones just feel better the tyres that you get on the bike as standard are the Michelin Road 5s lovely tyres they do feel good in the wet they afford you quite a lot of confidence and the only thing I have found with them is they're a little bit droppy when you're doing things like U-turns or figures of eights for the Mod 1 stuff. And by droppy I mean the bike drops in quite quickly. Way to John. <laughs> so when the students are practicing for their figures of eights, their U-turns, I do notice that the bike drops in more quickly than it does on the MT-07 but that's probably to do with the tyres more than the bike. This bike weighs 9 kilograms more than the MT-07's wet weight so the MT-07's are 180, this is 189. It does feel heavier, I think it's a little more top heavy whereas I believe the MT-07's are a little more bottom heavy. The lower down the weight on the bike the easier it feels and the nicer it feels when you're doing your slow speed riding. The geometry of different bikes obviously impacts things like when you're doing a U-turn. It's quite a noisy little engine this, it's got a lovely exhaust sound. It's nice but not intrusive, it's got a good little burble to it. Occasionally you get a pop 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 as you roll off the throttle. And that's just with the standard exhaust. It's not especially forgiving if you find yourself in the wrong gear, so holding it in too high a gear as you're slowing down, it will soon let you know and start chugging if you try and open the throttle again. Whereas you'll find an inline four like the CB650Rs are much more forgiving. And they'll pretty much accelerate in any gear. <laughs> like that's an inherent difference between a twin and an inline four. I really like twin engines. Having owned a Yamaha TDM for seven years, I loved that bike. So this is quite a bumpy road. The suspension on this bike is lovely. It's really quite smooth. 
front end and back end are very nice. I'm glad that they've improved the front end in terms of suspension compared to the older model, so we've now got the upside down forks. And the back feels comfortable and planted. It doesn't feel like it's throwing you out of shape when you're going around bends. That's probably one of the biggest drawbacks on my list for the MT-07 is that the rear suspension is particularly harsh and the seat's not especially comfortable whereas this seat is very comfortable so those two combined with the MT-07 make it rather uncomfortable on the bumpier roads and if I had to pick either of them I'd definitely pick this one in fact overall I would pick this one because it is simply a smoother, more forgiving bike to ride and you can make it fun whereas perhaps the MT-07 feels like it's a little bit more powerful but without having to work so hard if that makes sense you work this one to get the power with the MT-07 it feels like it's there already and I think that's to do with the gearing and where the torque comes in but I'm not technical enough to explain how or why I just know how it feels and what I like personally it depends on your own personal preference. Throttle control is lovely and smooth on this. It's not at all snatchy. So I was in second gear then. Clutch was out going over the bumps. And it didn't snatch at any point. Again, that's also to do with how relaxed your hand is on the handlebar. But it's not a snatchy throttle. Which is lovely. It's quite happy to be in fourth gear. From about 25 miles an hour upwards any lower than that and it'll start to be a little bit chuggy the steering feels ever so slightly lighter than the MT-07 and I don't know again whether that's to do with the tyres or the geometry of the bike it does mean that if you're tense on the bars at slow speeds you're more likely to get into a little bit of a weeby wobble simply because small inputs on the bars cause the bars to move that's true of any bike but I just found it a little bit more with this one it's nice to have light steering because it does make the bike feel very nimble just have to stay nice and relaxed with it feel a little bit of road surface vibration through the foot pegs but nothing terrible and it's certainly not anything that's off-putting or on long distances would cause you to have numb feet <laughs> I've had that before so easy to lean this bike it feels nice and planted the roads are quite wet today it has been raining and the roads haven't dried out but these tires feel totally planted and i feel very comfortable leaning this bike it does sound nice and it does have power surprising how much you can get out of second gear before you can take it up into third if you're trying to get away from the traffic behind so the car behind was gaining on me an awful lot up to that roundabout and I was nice and positive away from it which did create a good safety gap until they then decided to speed up to catch me up another good example of even though it feels like first gear is quite a short gear when you need the power there's actually quite a lot there using it when you need it working the bike a little bit harder because it's got less power and finding it where you need it Honda have very kindly fitted the Oxford heated grips we always fit those as standard for our training school bikes so that we can train through the winter without worrying about the students losing concentration through getting cold hands and we've also lowered this bike so it can accommodate the shorter of the riders I'm only five foot two so it's not just for me it's also for the learners of course but it does make a difference in terms of confidence and they're less likely to drop the bike which is always useful I'm sure Honda appreciate that too <laughs> and even though the bike's been lowered it still handles beautifully with no adverse effects a surprisingly little wind blast at 50 miles an hour anything up to 50 feels fine so far it feels very comfortable 
I can just feel a little bit of buffeting just below my shoulders on my arms. I would say on my biceps if I had any. <laughs> Let's see what these cars are up to. miles an hour there's quite a lot of vibrations coming through these handlebars so the vibrations through the handlebars at 70 miles an hour were a little bit too much for comfort for me but I have suffered with carpal tunnel in both my hands despite having had the operation so I'm perhaps a little more sensitive than most the wind blast was perfectly acceptable no problems with that even though I usually struggle with wind blast so happy days a nice amount of engine braking but I am going to use the brakes as well I'm in fifth gear for this roundabout 33 miles an hour and actually it coped with that very nicely I was surprised with that not much in terms of acceleration out of it although it wasn't much of an opportunity to I was surprised at the acceleration in sixth gear from 60 miles an hour up to 70 miles an hour that was impressive and again there was a car in front of me so I didn't have much opportunity to really go for it but I felt like it had more to give I'm not especially technical but this suspension feels a little soft now that we're at the higher speed I suspect the rear suspension is adjustable needs barely any input for these bends it feels like you're just looking around the bend and the bike's taking you around it's lovely quite a neutral seating position which probably helps somewhat I don't feel cramped but then I'm only five foot two a nice upright position with the handlebars my feet aren't in a particularly forward or back position they're just very neutral personally I like to be in as high a gear as possible because it really does feel like it wants to go more if you're in the lower gears such a nimble bike really easy to place it where you want it to be certainly got enough power for an overtake well, that was in third gear from quite slow speed it's definitely not lacking the power when you want to use it not lacking any power for overtakes that was a fourth gear overtake at 55 miles an hour provided you're in the correct gear and you're nice and positive there's no issues at all very nice bike to ride lovely feel from the brakes really smooth gearboxes are coming down through the gears and great power Now this is a very bumpy this road so I'm just going to test the suspension. Gosh it feels lovely and planted as you come around there. It actually feels nicer than my bike which is the Honda NC750 Oaks. Although mine is the older version so it's probably got the cheaper and less sophisticated suspension than this. Very nice. From a shorter rider's perspective, I do love the fact that I'm flat-footed on both sides on this bike since we've lowered it. I believe we've used the Lost Racing lowering links on this bike. But Lost Racing do provide a good quality lowering links. Don't really want to buy, be buying cheap ones off eBay where the metal's not necessarily good quality fuel injection is beautifully smooth you don't even notice the fuel injection on this whereas I've had bikes before where you can feel it 
not quite certain what it wants. Does it want more? Does it want less? And it gives you a ride that isn't very smooth. The seat is exceptionally comfortable. I feel like I could ride this all day without getting any issues with my bottom. I can't really say the same about the MT-07s, although we've got the older model, which is the 2017 models, and I'm aware that they have upgraded the seats with the newer models. They've also made the seats a lot wider, which makes it trickier for shorter riders like me. But because they're wider, they're more comfortable. They're thicker, more padded, more comfortable. From, a, from an instructor's perspective, when I'm riding behind this bike, when the students are learning on it, I do like how visible the rear brake light is. If anything, it's better than the CB650Rs where you've got the brake light that comes on in the middle of the rear light. It's a little less easy to spot because you can't really distinguish between is that the rear light or is it the brake light once the brake lights come on. Whereas this one is either on or not. I love the headlight configuration on this. It's very striking. I like the shape. I like the fact that they're LEDs and it simply looks good. In my personal opinion, obviously it's down to personal taste. I do like that Honda used the running lights, the orange ones at the front with the indicators. And I do like the Honda indicators. I think they're very, very good. They're bright, clear and big. Noticed on the later Yamaha MT-09s, they use a tiny little dot for an indicator, which is so small it's very difficult to see. Even though it's an LED, it's still very difficult to see in daylight when people are turning if you're quite far back quite bumpy these bends but the bike's handling it very nicely at 40 miles an hour. It is a little bit soft in terms of the suspension so you get a little bit of bounce back but so long as you're relaxed with it it's not too much of a problem and like I said I'm sure we could probably adjust the suspension to minimise that. The front end feels nice and firm and planted, not at all soft and spongy. Very confidence inspiring in the bends. Lovely, that was quite a slow turn in third gear could probably have done with dropping down into second gear but it did manage it quite well so even if you do end up turning in a slightly higher gear provided you're able to get back on the power it's not so bad block changing is very very easy on this bike because of how light the clutch is and how smooth the gearbox is I'm not a great fan of hearing the bike revving high, so I would much prefer to be in the higher gears. But obviously when you need the power it's there, and you can use more of the rev range in each of the gears to gain that power. Because most of the time we don't need it so much. I feel totally comfortable riding this bike in the wet. I have no worries about grip and stability in the bends. It's nicely planted and it inspires a lot of confidence. Just really enjoying the ride even though it started to rain. It's a lovely bike. Just a doddle to ride this bike. It's lovely. The throttle is smooth and forgiving. The clutch is light and forgiving. The brake aren't sharp but they're responsive you get a lot of feel from them the handling is light it's very nimble it's easy to ride without too much input it doesn't feel overly heavy and at slow speeds it's well balanced great bike honda well done in terms of weight it is one of the lighter big bikes that you can buy at 189 kilos, it's very light for a big bike. So for the smaller people like myself, 
or people who've got less strength it's going to be easier for moving about when you're not on the bike and also when you are on the bike if you're moving it with your feet when we lowered the bike we also needed to change the side stand because once the bike had been lowered it was sitting much too high on its stand so it has a different side stand i think it's an original one which honda have supplied but they've had it um professionally shortened so that it is still safe and once again it is worth having an original side stand professionally shortened as opposed to buying a cheap adjustable one off ebay as we have known the cheap adjustable ones to snap and the bike to land on the floor beautiful lovely plenty of power there in fourth gear What's strange is that I'm enjoying this ride so much that I hadn't even realised quite how heavily it was raining. <laughs> I love how positive the switch gear is on these Hondas. You get quite a positive click when you cancel it, so you know that it's on and you know that you've cancelled. I have been riding the bike now for a good couple of hours. Unfortunately, I've got it all dirty. And I probably should have done this at the beginning when it was clean. However, this bike has been ridden all winter this year. And I believe some of last winter too and I just wanted to mention the build quality so when you're looking at the bike once it's been ridden in winter obviously we do look after our bikes but I can't see any visible signs of corrosion on this bike which tells me that the Honda build quality is very good they're not using cheap metal materials they're using good quality materials even in areas like uh, uh, the swing arm here usually you'd see little elements of corrosion going on there but there's nothing it looks great so i am very very impressed which i'm not going to get run over with honda's build quality it still looks when it's clean <laughs> brand new and with a little bit of polishing up it would look stanking brand new even the exhaust downpipes are looking in good condition well into the engine it looks in good condition maybe there's the tiniest bit on the nuts and bolts down here but that's it oh yes and i can confirm it is the lust racing lowering links which you can see if i get down on my hands and knees properly you can see them just in here okay lust racing they're very very good i just love the bike it's great it rides really nicely it's a pleasure to ride and it's super comfortable. It's a lovely bike, very well balanced. And actually, it's not too bad at dropping in. It just looks like it drops in more when you're watching. Even on full luck it's quite comfortable a little bit of slow riding balance is lovely just using the throttle and the clutch a little bit of rear brake when the clutch is in that's all so there's nobody around bring it through watch what mr mercedes is doing and again let's try and set off nice and slow nothing coming Lovely. Easy peasy. Very nice bike to ride. There we go. Would I buy one? Yes. For riding up to about 65 miles an hour. <laughs> For any prolonged period of time. Now I'm up to 70 miles an hour. Quite a lot of vibrations coming through the front handlebars as opposed to what, the rear handlebars? <laughs> mm. 
now I'm up to 70 miles an hour. It is quite vibratory, very, very. <laughs>